Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. It's the beginning of October, so you know what that means. It's time for another monthly favorites roundup video. So today I'm going to be sharing all of my favorite products from September, but I wanna begin with some important dates for all of my Chanel beauty lovers. Mark your calendars because October 13th, next week, it's coming so soon, that will be the launch of the holiday collection as well as the Coco Mademoiselle Body Shimmer Gel. I don't know if you've seen photos of that circulating. It looks gorgeous. There's also going to be a Chanel Number no. 5 Shimmer Body Gel. I believe they've brought that out in the past, maybe around the holidays. They're usually limited edition. Right now, I'm currently planning on picking up the Coco Mademoiselle Body Gel, the entire Chanel Holiday Collection, as well as the holiday sets. It looks like they're also launching on October 13th. I know those are wildly popular every single year, so as soon as I get more information about the, what, what the sets actually look like, I will let you know. I did receive a little hint that the bags are really nice, in parentheses, tweed, so I don't know what that means. I know two years ago they had tweed-looking bags, but it seems like tweed is the moment right now with Chanel, so I have no idea if they will be similar to the old Chanel tweed holiday bags or if it's something new this year. I don't care. I'm excited, whatever it is. And then on November 1st, the Sublimage Concealer. I did receive a couple DMs. People were asking me about it. I saw a few posts online, the sneak peeks. I had no clue that this was even coming. It looks like it does come in a little pot, similar to the foundation, but I'm excited. I feel like I have been manifesting this Sublimage concealer for a really long time now, always saying they need a skincare concealer, they need something else, they got rid of Lip Lumiere, what's going on, they need more options. So of course, I will be purchasing a Sublimage concealer on November 1st. Before we get into the makeup, I do have a few pieces of skincare here to talk about. The first is this Dr. Dennis Gross Dewy Deep Cream with vitamin C and lactic acid. I've been using this for a few weeks now and I really like it. It's too soon to really tell long-term results, but the reason I like it so much is that it is very thick and nourishing. It almost feels a little bit greasy, but not in a bad way. It just feels like it's truly nourishing and moisturizing your skin. And I usually avoid moisturizers like that. So this was very different for me. The first time I felt the texture, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but I really love this. So I've been using this during the day. The smell is very pleasant. It's very light. It smells a bit citrusy probably because of the vi vitamin C, but it's just a really nice moisturizer. And this is supposed to layer really beautifully on top of the new vitamin C serum from Dr. Dennis Gross, which I've also been using. I just like the way it feels. I've kind of been going back and forth between a few moisturizers during the day. I've been using this one. I'm still going through my number one to Chanel. I'm almost completely through it. And then I also still really love this Amore Pacific Time Response Skin Reserve Fluid. So those are the three that I kind of go back and forth between depending on how my skin is feeling. But because my skin has been feeling very dry lately, this has been a lifesaver. And it works really not well during the day beneath makeup, even though it is a pretty heavy, rich cream, it still works great during the day. In fact, I don't use this in the evenings, only daytime, and I love it. Next, I have the 111 Skin Y Theorem Repair Serum. This was gifted to me several months back and I finally finished it just last night, two nights ago. And I'm very sad that it's finished, unfortunately, because it's a beautiful serum. It's very thick. So this is what I've been using in the evenings. Whether or not I'm also layering my retinol, I always use this serum face, neck, chest, decollete, and when I wake up in the morning, my skin just still feels very dewy, very supple. It looks like a clear gel when you pump it out, but it's very thick and rich, almost has a neosporin type of consistency. So it creates a layer on the skin. It almost feels like it's creating a, a moisture barrier, like it's locking in everything while you sleep. If you're looking for an anti-aging serum that isn't too active, you don't have to pick it up from a dermatologist's office, something that will give you noticeable results, 
I highly recommend this. I was very impressed by it. The first 111 skin product I've ever used up completely. And my last skincare favorite is this Tom Ford Research Cleansing Concentrate. I don't think I have ever talked about this before. This was gifted to me in the spring during my trip with Tom Ford Beauty. I believe it was maybe in March or April. You can tell by looking at this bottle that it's kind of been through the ringer. I keep this in the shower as we speak. I love this cleanser. It blew me away because I didn't really have high expectations. I haven't used any other Tom Ford skincare. I've heard good things about the research line, but it is incredibly expensive. If you like La Mousse from Chanel, very comparable, except this scent in this cleanser is amazing. It smells like a delicious, like white suede Tom Ford fragrance which shouldn't be a selling point of a face cleanser, but it just makes me so happy every time I use this. It's part of the luxury experience. The foam is really silky and rich like La Mousse. You only need a teeny tiny bit because you get so much lather with even just the smallest amount of the cleanser. But I also feel like it cleans my face. It gets rid of all of the leftover makeup. I always double cleanse, so I'll go in with my makeup melting balm and then I follow up with this. It cleanses my face without stripping the skin. My skin feels really great afterwards and I don't know what else to say about it. I just love this cleanser and I've been using it now for several months and I mean I'm starting to go through it. I imagine I'll finish it before the end of the year maybe but you just need such a tiny bit that this one bottle will last you probably six months. I mean, it's really remarkable. Moving on to makeup, I have two primers here to talk about. The first is this new Chanel primer. This is La Basse Illuminatrice Glowing Makeup Primer. It's moisturizing, it's plumping. And then I also pulled out my Super Goop Glow Screen, which I know I've talked about countless times by now on my channel, but I just wanted to mention it again because it's one of my all-time favorite primers and I did use it quite a bit this month because anytime I'm traveling or if I'm taking a vacation somewhere, we spent a week in the Keys, this always comes with me anywhere and everywhere and the glow screen has SPF 40 whereas the new Chanel primer doesn't have any SPF, but other than that one major difference, I would say they're sort of comparable. The La Bosse Illuminatrice has hyaluronic acid, it has blue and red algae, I think it has blurring spheres, but it's basically a radiance primer. So it's going to give you a little bit of a sheen. It's a slightly, very subtle, pearly sheen on the skin, but it also just feels very lightweight. It's gonna grip your foundation. I've used this a couple times now and every single time I love the way my makeup looks. It's going to be best for somebody with normal to dry skin. I think if you're incredibly oily, you might not love it, even though it doesn't feel greasy. It doesn't feel like you're adding anything greasy or oily to your skin. It's more like a gel texture, but it is very plumping and it's very moisturizing. I'm pretty sure this next item is my first holiday product of 2022. It might be my only holiday product of 2022 so far because I have had quite a few shipping delays lately. I have two packages downstairs, so I'll check later on. Maybe my Charlotte Tilbury palettes finally arrived, but I love this new Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked palette. It is gorgeous. It is my new favorite Hourglass palette out of all of the palettes I've collected from Hourglass. They really do a beautiful job during the holidays. They usually come out with really pretty limited edition packaging, but nothing compares to this year. I ordered my palette directly from the Hourglass website, so I was able to customize. That's why I have the Tiger artwork. And then on the inside, I have, I believe the second color story. These are the shades inside. It seems like there's one that's best for light skin, then there's a medium and then deeper tones. And this one is in the middle. So you have the two blushes. This one is gorgeous. It's very light, luminous, pretty for daytime. This is more of a matte, kind of a deep rose. I love the bronzer in this palette. Every palette I have from Hourglass that has a bronzer, they all have different undertones. So you never know what you're gonna get. Some of them are really red, others are really brown and cool toned. 
but this one is perfect. It's nice and warm the way I like my bronzers. It has a hint of shimmer to it, but it's a really pretty gold sheen. So it doesn't look muddy, doesn't look dirty on the face. I think it's incredibly flattering. And then I also really love these finishing powders. The highlighter is too dark for my face, but I think it will look really nice on the shoulders, the neck, chest, decollete. It'll work on the eyes. And that's part of what I love so much about these palettes is that they're great for travel. You can use this on the face, the eyes, everywhere. It's very versatile. This tiger design with the turquoise background just spoke to me. I think this is so pretty. I would have purchased anything they put inside this palette. It's so nice. The elephant and the butterfly is really nice as well. And I love that a portion of the profits of these palettes go towards helping animals. Completely unrelated to beauty, but worth mentioning because it is kind of seasonal, topical, I guess. But if you have an espresso machine and you love pumpkin spice, the little pumpkin spice cake pods are really yummy. I always look forward to the holiday flavors and I don't remember trying the pumpkin spice at all last year. Maybe I did and I just don't remember, but I really like it this year. So I have my pumpkin spice latte. It does the trick. I think they nailed the flavor. I know pumpkin spice and pumpkin flavored things can be somewhat polarizing. Either you love it or you hate it. I love it. I love everything. Cinnamon, pumpkin, spiciness. I love gingerbread. My husband hates those types of flavors. So that just means more coffee for me. This time around, I always look for all of the interesting syrups and I think they come out with, I've never seen pumpkin Oreos, but last year I got a gingerbread Oreo and oh my goodness, it was so good. So I haven't seen those in the stores yet, but I cannot wait for them. Delicious. If you have any favorite seasonal flavors, anything seasonal that I need to try, let me know down in the comment section. But my next favorite beauty item from September is the Gucci blush. This is such a beautiful packaging formula. Everything about it is really stunning. I know we dreamed of Gucci blushes whenever they launched the bronzer and powders because they just did it so well. I knew this would be an incredible launch and it is. I only picked up one shade, which I think is plenty. That's enough to review the product. This is 03 Radiant Pink. It's kind of the perfect, slightly warm, but everyday shade. I mean, I would use this with any eye look, with any lipstick. It's kind of the perfect go-to blush color. The texture feels almost creamy to the touch. It's very finely milled. It has a very satiny, creamy feel to it. And then if you look at the powder closely, from afar it looks matte, but if you look close up, you can tell that there's a slight sheen to it. So that's why they describe it as a luminous matte. I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's not going to compete with your highlighter or give you too much glow to the cheeks, but it also doesn't just look flat powdery on the skin. I think they did an incredible job. And this packaging is to die for with the little stars. I have two Huda Beauty products. The first is a new concealer. This was sent to me complimentary. It's the Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer. I'm wearing this today and I have the shade Honey 1.7B. This is very full coverage. I would say it has a natural finish. I wouldn't call it luminous. I wouldn't say it's super matte either. Definitely has more of a matte dry down, but I wouldn't say it's dry. It's just a really perfect finish, incredibly full coverage. I really like this concealer. It blends out beautifully and it just looks very smooth. You'll see I applied way too much the first time I tested this out. I did a get ready with me video and you know, it was a first impression. I was just going in with too much product. And when I tried to blend it out, it was just very bright underneath the eyes but it lasted really nicely. I mean, it looked gorgeous even later on during the day. So I would say this is for somebody who still loves a really full glam. Maybe you have under eye bags or certain spots on the face that you want more coverage, then you will love this concealer. And then my next favorite is this Cherry Blossom Cake Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. This I purchased myself from Sephora. I feel like one of the lucky ones that I saw that it was back in stock and I was able to get my hands on it because it almost immediately sold back out. But I do really like this setting powder. It's not overly pink. It has a very heavy fragrance, which I like. It smells very sweet. 
it's a beautiful powder. The Huda Beauty powders are so finely milled. It's just gorgeous. You can set the entire face with it. This is pretty brightening. It's definitely a lot more brightening than my banana bread powder. I pulled that back out and I've been kind of testing it going back and forth. That powder is really nice all over the face. Not as nice underneath the eyes for me because it sort of tones down any brightness that I want. With this powder, I think it's perfect for under eyes. I wouldn't necessarily use this to set my entire face. What I've discovered, looking back, is that it has a very slight pink glow, but you can definitely tell if you set the entire face. So this is really best applied just underneath the eyes, right above the blush area, kind of right in here. If you apply it all over the face, it will be fine. Nothing bad will happen, but I just think it looks maybe a little bit funny. You might end up looking a bit Casper the Ghost-ish, whereas the Banana Bread Powder is perfect for all over the face. I have two eye products to share. The first is the Moonlit Seduction Eyeshadow Palette. This is the latest Mothership Palette from Pat McGrath Labs, and I'm told it's the only Mothership launch of the year, and I think it is beautiful. This is the actual palette. I do have it on my eyes today. And I've been playing around with this so much. I have filmed videos with it, but even on days that I'm not filming, I'll just pull this out. I did take this on vacation with me. And I find it to be really versatile because it's mostly a neutral palette. You do have a couple pops in here, but I just think it's one of her more wearable color stories. Probably a bit boring for those Pat McGrath Labs collectors who really love her colorful palettes like the Holiday Palette launch this year. Those are palettes that I just would never really grab and I own several Pat McGrath Labs palettes that I kind of regret purchasing because I don't touch them. This is one that I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of use out of because it has a few shades in here that just work really nicely for an everyday look. So I think this can be very soft, a little bit more natural, and then you still have your pops of glitter over here. So it's a lot of fun. I love this gold sparkle. This I use almost every single time I pull this out. It's gorgeous. I think this is going to be really pretty for the holidays. The second eye product that I discovered and really loved in September is the House Labs Optic Intensity Eco Liner. This is the shade Deep Bronze Shimmer. It does have a little smudger brush on the end, which is nice because it's a flattened smudger brush. So I actually think this is kind of ideal. I haven't seen any other eyeliners with a brush quite like that. I love the color. This bronze shimmer is really nice. It's a chocolatey brown with a hint of shimmer, as the name suggests. It looks really beautiful, either smudged out along the lash line or it looks great in the waterline. Probably my favorite House Labs product that I tried. There were a few others that I liked, including this lipstick. This is the Le Monster Lip Crayon 2.0 in the shade Peach Matte. This is on my lips today. And it's just a nice, Kind of warm, almost pumpkin-y nude. It's a really pretty peachy nude. So this I also really like. I mean, it's a basic creamy lipstick. I do like that it's kind of skinny because it's a lip crayon. I really like it. The lip combination that I'm wearing today is the House Labs lipstick in Peach Matte. For lip liner, I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude instead of Pillow Talk. I've misplaced my pillow talk. I have two pillow talk lip liners somewhere and I've misplaced them. So I picked up the iconic nude out of necessity, but I actually really like this. It's more of a brownie nude. So it's very pretty for fall winter. And then I've been topping that off with this Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump from Tarte. It's the shade White Peach. This has become one of my favorite lip products. It's a little bit minty, so you kind of feel like you're getting that plumping sensation, but it just looks really pretty. I find myself reapplying it much more often than any other typical lip gloss, but I don't care. It feels really good. It's more like a lip 
butter. That's all of the new makeup I have to share. I do have a handful of hair care products as well. Earlier this month, you might have seen I did a campaign with Olaplex, and I've been testing out three of their styling products. I've loved Olaplex for years and years. I mean, it was such a dream come true to work with them because I use their products and they're some of my most restocked products at Sephora actually. Like I've restocked their number eight hair mask several times, the number three hair perfecter of course, saved my color treated hair. This is one of their newer products that I've been using regularly for the first time. It's the number nine bond protector nourishing hair serum. It's so weightless and it just helps protect your hair from damage. So this is really nice, especially for blowouts at home. I also like to apply the number six bond smoother. So this is more of a rich hair cream, but again, it's pretty weightless. It still doesn't weigh the hair down. You can also use this once it's dry, but when it's dry, that's when I like to go in with the hair oil. This also has a heat protectant, so you can use this wet as well, but this is amazing. In fact, I'm going to apply just a little bit right now. Teeny tiny bit. And you just, Really apply anywhere that you want to tame frizz, protect, add a little shine. It smells really amazing. I curled my hair earlier and I didn't break up the curls yet because I wanted to keep it a little PC, create a little beachy wave. The number seven hair bonding oil has become one of my favorite Olaplex products. It's really nice. Again, doesn't weigh the hair down. I mean, you have to be careful that you don't apply too much, but I absolutely love all three of those products. They have a gift set. Let me find it actually. So if you've never tried these products before, but you're interested, I would probably go ahead and pick up this set. And what I would really do is hold out, add it to your shopping cart and get ready, but wait until the Sephora holiday savings event. It's going to be here before you know it in just a few weeks. And that way you can save a little money. I got a haircut last week. It might not seem like it because you can't really tell where the bottom of my hair is, but I cut probably five, four or five inches from the bottom. My hair was really long. In the back, it was hitting like right at the top of my butt. I mean, it was extremely long, but when you get to the bottom, it was a little bit stringy. You know, it had broken off by the time you got to the bottom. I desperately needed a haircut and I went for a bit of a chop. So now it hits me about here. So kind of mid chest, which is long, but to me, I'm so used to my long mermaid hair. It looks very short whenever I see it in the mirror, but I've been trying a new style instead of my blowout, which I haven't done yet with the shorter hair. I think it will be a lot easier. I've been using this T3 curling iron. So this is the 1.25 the same size that they use whenever I get my hair styled in the salon, but I didn't have this tool at home until recently. This was sent to me um, by T3 Complimentary. It's my favorite hair tool at the moment. Usually I'm a wand person. I love the wand. Never been a huge fan of curling irons because I didn't have the technique down and I felt like I could never achieve the same style that I get at the salon. It's because I had the wrong size barrel. So the one and a quarter is the key. 2022 is becoming the year that I finally conquer hair and learn how to do different hairstyles. It's only taken me a couple tries to really get it down. I mean, it's very easy. It's such a smooth curling iron. I really like it. When it comes to hot tools, whether I'm using a wand or a curling iron, hot rollers, T3 is my favorite brand. And that completes my September favorites. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.